1 Peter 2 and 9. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Just think about that for a moment. You are not ordinary. You are extraordinary. You are not insignificant. You are chosen. These words should resonate deeply within your spirit and fill you with a sense of awe and gratitude. God has handpicked you, called you out of darkness, and ushered you into his marvelous light. You are part of a chosen generation. In a world that often makes us feel like a face in the crowd, God sees you as unique and precious. He has set you apart for a divine purpose. Your life has meaning and you have been specially appointed to fulfill God's plan in this generation. Embrace your identity as a chosen one. For you are not here by accident. You have been intentionally placed in this time and place to make a difference. Not only are you a part of a chosen generation, but you are also part of a royal priesthood. This means that you have direct access to the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. And you have been granted the privilege to approach God's throne with confidence, knowing that you have been chosen to represent him in this world. You have the authority to bring his love, grace, and mercy to those around you. You are an ambassador of the kingdom of God, carrying his light and hope wherever you go. Furthermore, you belong to a holy nation. God has called you into his community of believers, a family united in faith. In this holy nation, you find support, encouragement, and accountability. Together, we strive to live in accordance with God's word and reflect his character. As a chosen and holy people, we have the opportunity to demonstrate God's love to the world, showing them what it means to be set apart for his purposes. Lastly, you are his own special people. This is a reminder that God cherishes you, delights in you, and considers you precious. You are not just a number in the vast sea of humanity. You are known intimately by your heavenly father. He knows your every need, your every struggle, and your every dream. He has chosen you and desires a personal relationship with you. You are loved beyond measure. You have been chosen by God, and it is crucial for you to acknowledge and remember this truth. You are not a result of chance or happenstance. Rather, God deliberately brought you into existence. He formed you with intention and foreknowledge long before the foundation of the earth were laid. You are not an accident, a mistake, or a mere casualty of random events. God purposefully created you. Consider what he said to Jeremiah. Jeremiah 1 and 5. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto nations. Look at that first line in Jeremiah 1 and 5. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Isn't that truly astounding? Before you were even formed in the womb, God already knew you. He knew you before your very first heartbeat. Even before your mother realized she was carrying you, God had complete knowledge of you and every aspect of your being. There is nothing that you do that catches God by surprise. He was aware of every failure, every fault, every mistake, every shortcoming, and every inadequacy. And yet, in spite of all of that, he still chose you. Why? Simply because he loves you. 
So what are some signs that God has chosen you? Sign number one. you don't fit. Have you ever noticed that those whom God chose in the Bible never quite fit in? Joseph, chosen by God, never truly fit in. Even as a teenager, he became an outcast within his own family, despised by his own brothers. However, God had chosen Joseph to hold the second highest position in all of Egypt. Second only to Pharaoh himself, it is truly remarkable how an outcast, once a disowned slave, rose to become one of the most powerful figures in the greatest nation of that time. David, chosen by God to be king of Israel, also experienced a similar pattern. We remember him as the young boy who defeated Goliath and as a mighty man of God who conquered Israel's enemies. He was the chosen king, a man after God's own heart. However, David never quite fit in. His father, Jesse, failed to see the potential for kingship within him. While Jesse believed that his other sons, Eliab, Abinadab, and Shema, were fit for the role, God had chosen the one whom Jesse had not even considered. God intended for you to be different. Your inability to fit in within this world is not a coincidence. It is because this world is not your true home. God has set you apart, marked you as his own, as a believer in Christ, and you are called to be distinct, no longer conforming to the ways of this world, but conforming to the word of God. The beauty of being chosen by God is that you need not live in fear of those who oppose you. You can be free from the anxieties of plots and schemes formed against you. Isaiah 54 and 17, no weapon formed against you shall prosper and every tongue which rises against you in judgment you shall condemn. Sign number two that you are chosen is seen here in Isaiah 54 and 17 and that is no weapon formed against you shall prosper. As you reflect on your life, you will observe that weapons have been formed against you, but they have not prevailed. The verse, no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper is a promise from God to his believers. Applicable not just to the people of Israel, but to Christians worldwide. Isaiah, the prophet, understood something that we often fail to appreciate. This is God's own word, assuring you that no weapon sent to harm you will succeed in its mission. The devil employs various weapons, as seen in the book of Job, where disease was among the afflictions he brought upon Job's life. Fear is another weapon in his arsenal. However, as a child of God, you do not have to fear. God has promised that it will not prevail. It will not triumph. There is nothing more reassuring than knowing that God is always by your side, supporting us regardless of the challenges we face or the hardships we endure. There is a radiant light at the end brought forth by the Lord. No matter how formidable or terrifying the obstacles may appear, they will not overpower us. Victory is guaranteed for those who trust in the Lord and make him their refuge in times of adversity. If you reflect on your life, you will recognize the hand of the Lord upon you. Looking back, you can see that without the Lord, you would not have overcome the trials you face. God chose you. It doesn't mean that weapons will not be formed against you. The Bible clearly tells us they will. However, they will not succeed. Consider your life and the situations you have conquered against all odds. There are circumstances you have faced and triumphed over that would have devastated others. Yet you stand here today. You are chosen by God. Being chosen by God does not mean that no weapon will be formed against you. It means that when weapons are formed, they will not prosper. 
when we find ourselves walking through the fires of life, where their intensity threatens to consume us, let us remember the story of the three Hebrew boys and how God delivered them from the fiery furnace. Let us recall how God entered the fire with them. Our God is truly magnificent. Not only does he rescue us from the difficult situations, but he accompanies us within those circumstances. He is with you in the midst of the waters and he is with you in the midst of the fire. No matter the situation you find yourself in, God will be there by your side. That is why some of our most profound encounters with God occur during our darkest moments in life. God will never let you down. He is faithful, unwavering in his commitment to you. Remember, you're not an accident. God intentionally created you.